everyone, it's lovely to be back with you, so thank you very much for your company today. I've had a wonderful morning playing around with some of my fabrics and laces, trying to put together the idea I had in mind for the cover of this little garden themed journal of stitchery journal. This, as you can see, is the base cover that I showed in my last video and you can check that out by looking in my channel playlist if you missed it and it's of interest to you. So as you can see, it's just a very basic cover that I've made out of vintage French linen. It was an old bed sheet that I cut up and I've put a couple of layers together and it's got some wool batting in the middle of it. So very, very simple, nothing special about this. But as you can see, I've left a gap at the bottom here. So there you go, you can see the batting in there. Now, the original idea that I had in mind for the cover of this journal was to layer all over the top with a mixture of fabrics and laces and then embroider over the top in crazy quilting style where you do embroidery stitches along all the seams where your fabrics and laces meet or by doing an image on the front here somewhere. So that's why this little gap was left at the bottom, so that when I did my embroidery stitches, the reverse of my stitching wouldn't be shown on the inside of my cover. But also, once I'd layered up all the front here and also the back with all the fabrics and laces, that I could assess then whether the cover was firm enough for the journal cover that I wanted or whether it wasn't and if it wasn't then I could use this little gap to slip in a piece of iron-on interfacing and then close it up and that iron-on interfacing would give a bit more rigidity to the cover. Whilst I was playing this morning with some of the bits and bobs that I've got on my desk I moved away from my original idea so let me show you. I actually thought that I would use maybe something like a piece of one of these vintage handkerchiefs that I've got and let me just open that out put a portion up in the top corner there I lifted out some vintage broidery anglais I originally tried this piece but it's an off-white it's more of a cream and I needed to keep to more of the softer off-white or white so I discarded that one and where's the other one I moved towards using this one. I particularly loved it because of the scalloping along the bottom and I actually thought that I would take this all the way along the bottom of my cover, around the back and on the inside and create two pockets, one on each side. And I'm still going to do that but I'm not going to use this on the front but this was one of the pieces that I was auditioning. As you can see here I've got a piece that um, I've ripped out of some wedding lace and I was thinking I could put that on the front as well. I also played around with this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous piece of wedding lace. Now as you can see it's got some diamante gems at the bottom. Just, I'm not sure, there we go, you can just pick them out on camera there. Um, I wasn't going to have those in place and I found that I could actually quite easily just use my thumbnail and pull those off. So there we go, that one's come off. Um, and I was playing around with this at the top of my journal up here and this at the bottom. Um, then I turn this round and I put it at the top like that because I really liked this netting that was down here and it gave me a very delicate scalloped edge at the top and I thought this worked in quite well with this at the bottom and I was also playing around with this. Now this is the right way round but I was thinking it was too creamy that way round but if I flipped it round onto the reverse it became softer and I was thinking that looked quite nice but the more I played around with this as much as I loved it and I really did love it when I was assessing 
what it would look like with the embroidered journal pages inside it wasn't in keeping this is too too soft too delicate for the actual journal pages that I've created inside so I've moved away from that but I still wanted to keep it nice and soft so what I've come up with is to use this on the inside to create the pockets that I wanted to. This is white Swiss dot tulle and I'm going to use this all over the outside and the inside of my cover and this will keep it nice and soft. And then on the front cover here, do an embroidery by someone who is very much in vogue on YouTube at the moment, Jennifer Coulston. She has done a very simple but very beautiful design of a tree with some foliage along the bottom and she's just layered that embroidery up onto some torn edged pieces of fabric and I thought that that would work really well with the journal pages inside this journal. So now I know where I'm going with my journal cover and my design, I can determine whether the cover is going to be firm enough for what I have in mind, because now I'm not going to be layering up lots and lots of fabric and laces all over this cover. I'm only going to be layering up a small portion in the middle, and I'm only going to be doing that on the front and not on the reverse. So <laughs> knowing that, I can determine that this is not going to be firm enough for what I have in mind. Now I know that I can bring in a piece of iron-on interfacing that I've got here. And as you can see, I have cut this slightly smaller than my inside cover. So what I will do with this is I will use this gap here and I will push this into my cover, the glue side next to my battening. If you remember, I've got Bonder Web on this side here, on the reverse of this side. So once I get this in place and iron it, the heat will activate this glue on the Bonder Web and also on this and I'm hoping that it's going to give me the rigidity that I want. Now I don't have to iron it and fuse all those layers together but I'd like to so I'm going to do that and then when I've done that I can close up this little gap here with my needle and just stitch over the top and then I'll come back and show you how I'm going to attach my tulle fabric to the outside and inside of the cover. Okay, so I have ironed that now and I'm really pleased how this looks. It's lovely and firm now and just perfect for what I have in, in mind. Yes, it's a fiddly way to do a cover, but I like the end result, so I'm really pleased with it. I haven't stitched my gap here at the top. All I've done is just turned it in um, very quickly using the iron and I'm going to go away now and stitch along this I've cut myself two pieces of bonder web. This is with the backing on. And as you can see, I've marked one top outside. So that's the outside cover and this one top inside. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this cover and the bonder web to my ironing board and using a dry iron, I'm going to iron over the top of the backing paper and that will activate the glue on the bonder web and it will stick to the outside cover. And then I'm going to do exactly the same with this portion of bonder web and iron that onto there so that when I come back to you, this cover will look exactly the same, but it will have bonder web on both the inside and the outside. So this is my bonder web ironed onto my cover. So if I just peel off the backing, so that's the inside of my cover now with Bonder Web on it, and this is the outside. And now I can attach my tool onto this. Now I've laid my tool fabric over the top of this, and I've got a big portion here and another portion on this side because what I want to do is wrap it round the outside cover which is what I've got here and have it meeting in the centre 
on the inside because that's where my stitching is going to be when I stitch my signatures in and that way it'll be hidden. I'm just going to bring my iron to this and iron it in place on my mat here but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a cloth an ironing cloth down on top of this before I actually iron because I'm not quite sure how well this tool will take dry direct heat. And there we go, that is my tool attached to the front side and now all I need to do is flip it over and iron the tool onto the other side. I've cut a piece of that broad anglais big enough to fit inside the inside cover of my journal with a little bit extra for me to have a seam allowance and across the top I trimmed it off so that it had a neater edge and then folded it over at the top to the right side. This is the right side and that's the wrong side and the reason I've turned it over to this side rather than to the reverse is so that I could put this piece of lace across the top and stitch it in place so that the seam was nice and neat on the inside. So I'm just going to trim off this little bit there. What I'm going to do now is go away now and hand stitch this piece of lace onto my broad ray anglais and then turn in my side seams ready to stitch it into the inside cover of my journal. My piece of lace is hand stitched on the top of this little piece of broadery anglais. So this is the top side, that's the reverse. There's no seam here that anything could catch on when I pop it inside the pocket. I'm going to pop this on here, turn it in and create a little seam there like that and pin it and I'm going to have the top of each of these scallops lined up with the bottom edge of my journal cover so that I've got a little bit of interest peeping out at the bottom and this piece down the centre I'm not going to stitch that because when I come to stitching my signatures that's going to hold that in, in place for me so I'm just going to turn my seam here and hand stitch it into my journal along the bottom here and similarly on that side. So there we go, that's my pocket stitched in now and it's all secure down both sides and along the bottom and I get that little bit of a overlap on the front cover. So now I'm going to stitch in my signatures. So to do that, I'm just gonna bring in my text block. I'm going to center it on my cover and then I'm going to just stitch down each of these creases or each of these folds here on my sewing machine. Here's my journal with my signature stitched in. As you can see, there's my lines of stitching down the spine. So I'm gonna cover that over with a piece of lace in a minute. So let me open it up and show you. So there's my pocket. This piece here is still open. So I'm going to stitch this edge down and it's similar to this edge here. This one is still open. So this one needs a little bit of stitching to close that up. And I have just stitched down between each of my signatures here. And I've got some lace to hand stitch down either side of my pictures. And that lace should, if I've done my measuring right, meet in the middle there and hide my my stitching. So I'm going to go away and sew these pieces of lace in place and I'm going to stitch down this front portion here, this gap here, and similarly on the back. My signatures are all stitched in now and I've put lace down the inside of each page. I was planning to use a wide piece of lace but um, I actually decided that this looked better. So this is all hand stitched in. It probably would have been easier to have used a wider piece of lace because it would have been less hand stitching but c'est la vie. So now I need to work on the cover and we're almost there. I'm getting so excited now. Um, okay so I've got this horrible messy stitching on the spine. I'm hoping you can just pick that out. The light isn't good here today, um, so sorry about that. And my neighbour has just decided to give his hedge its last uh, trim of the year. So apologies about the noise in the background if you hear a whirring noise. So as I was saying, I don't like this messy stitching, but I always plan to put lace on the back here. I 
did think that I would stitch a couple of strips of this beautiful lace here that I've got, but I'm going to need to stitch three strips of this across here because it's about one and a half inches wide and trust me, trying to stitch on here and keep it straight is not going to look good. So yes, I could use a wider lace, but I want to use this so that it all flows with what I've got going on in the journal. So what I'm thinking is that I will tear myself another piece of this fabric, which was my um, vintage French bed sheet, and rip a piece of that, machine stitch three portions of this lace over it, which will give me a lovely rough edge, and then actually glue and stitch the strip of fabric with the lace on top onto my spine and I'm hoping that that will, will work. It should do, I don't see why it shouldn't. So let's see what I've got and I knew that I'd got these strips here and just looking at them I know that they are either bang on um, an inch and a half or less and yeah it's an inch and a quarter. At the top end it might be wider yeah, inch and a half. Now, that might seem perfect, but what I actually want is a torn edge on both sides, and this is a selvage edge. So even if I rip this, I'm not going to get an inch and a half. So um, that is such a shame because this strip would have been absolutely ideal to have used up. So let's see what else I've got. I've got this big portion here. And I'm not going to use this because these are big enough portions for me to do an embroidery piece on or to use for pages in another fabric journal. Um, so I've also got these. Now there's two strips here and these are looking perfect. So let me put one to one side. I'm going to measure an inch and a half. Again, let me put that to one side. Clear the decks, Carol. Um, so I'm going to measure an inch and a half. I'll do it on this left-hand side and make a little snip. And rip it down. Oh, lovely. So that should be very, very nice. So let's just roughly eyeball where I need it to be up here, which is about there and rip it across, take away my loose threads. So that's my piece, I will give this a press before I do anything with it. And now I'm just going to just see what my pieces of lace will look like. There we go, that's lovely, that's the look I wanted. What I've done is I have put Bondaweb behind these three pieces of lace. So I'm just going to take the backing off, like so. What I'm going to do with this is put this on here, like that, and then machine stitch it so that the bonder web actually holds it to my fabric perfectly whilst I'm stitching it. So, as I said before, I'll be back when that's done. Oh, I'm thrilled with how this has worked. I've just done a row of machine stitching down the centre of each piece of lace and then um, a double row at the top and the bottom. So I still have movement at the side of my pieces of lace, which would be nice when it bends round the, the spine. Or I've got bondweb on the back, so you, as you can see, you can stitch through that quite, quite happily. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to my iron. I'm going to place that on there like that and just apply some dry heat to activate that bonder web and then I'm going to put in some little invisible stitches all the way around to act as a belt and braces for holding this in place. And my bonder web for the back of this strip didn't go all the way to the frayed edges because I wanted to keep those so that they would lift slightly and again have some movement along the side of my journal there. I'll be back when I've ironed that on and done some invisible stitching um, as a belt and braces to uh, help hold it in place. 
So the spine's done now. I did resort to putting a little bit of um, art glitter glue underneath, which is an excellent fabric glue in addition to Fabri-Tac, um, because the bonder web wasn't holding particularly well on here. And even though I was stitching it, I wanted to make sure this was going to stay absolutely in place. So that's how it looks now. I've got this little frayed edge here and a little bit on that side, but it is securely in place on my spine. So I can't believe it. We're almost there, almost there. 